Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Grijalva. Thank you for taking uh, the time to have this meeting and, and this hearing today. And thank you to all of our witnesses who have come to share their expertise. Um, I am a proud co-lead along with Representative Nidia Velasquez on HR 2070, um, which is the Puerto Rico Self-Determination Act. And as was noted by one of our witnesses, self-determination is a human right. Uh, I believe it, that this legislation is the best answer to the centuries old question of Puerto Rico status and colonial history. Uh, I'm pleased that in the Department of Justice's analysis of our bill, they conclude that Puerto Rico as an island does in fact have a right to a fair and democratic self-determination process. And that, and that one-sided initiatives fail to grant Puerto Ricans this outcome. However, I want to be clear that a true decolonization process exempts the current territorial status. Uh, with that said, I just want to clear up some mythologies <laughs> and uh, around this bill. Um, so to Dr. Cox Ol Ol Alomar, um, very quickly as a yes or no, have former statehood plebiscites and referendums in Puerto Rico, have they been plagued historically by electoral irregularities, inaccuracies, and or have been unilaterally influenced by one party? And the answer is yes. So would a constitutional assembly be the most inclusive, democratic, and just process, given that uh, that history of, of irregularity and bias, would a, a constitutional assembly be the most just process for the decolonization of Puerto Rico, in your view? Definitely, yes. And I actually invite you to take a look at the White House Task Force Report of 2011, which basically suggests that the convention is the most encompassing process. Thank you. Um, now, additionally, in our self-determination bill, does the bill oppose statehood? No. No. Our bill does not oppose statehood whatsoever. And does this bill on the other side too, does it impose independence necessarily on the island? And the answer is no. No, it is status agnostic and it is focused on the process. Now let's contrast that with the statehood bill. Um, would the, ad, on, the, the port, on the Puerto Rico Statehood Admission Act, would if passed, would it admit Puerto Rico immediately uh, to the United States as its supporters claim? And the answer is no. And the DOJ has says that there's no fait accompli. This is no done deal. I mean, it's pretty this clear. This bill will not admit, if passed, will not admit ad, immediately admit Puerto Rico as a state. Now, would this, um, in your expert opinion, can voters legitimately exercise their right to self-determination without knowing fully the options that they are voting for? And the answer is no. Take a look at Brexit. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that is a wonderful example of the situation that voters are in where they had a status vote, were not fully informed, and many of them regret uh, what's happening. Now, on that note, do you believe that Puerto Ricans, that Boricuas on the island, have ever had the benefit of being fully informed that voting for statehood also means potentially ensuring the survival of La Junta uh, de Control Fiscal? No, there's no proper process of actually informing folks what's going on. No. So you'd say that Puerto Ricans don't know that La Junta could stay um, and be preserved if they if the statehood bill passes. And the answer is no. Now, lastly, in the cases of Alaska and Hawaii, when they were admitted to the United States, they had uh, a mandate that um, information about the legal effects of statehood uh, and the transition be provided to those voters. Alaska and Hawaii had full information. Does HR 1522, the statehood bill, have any mandate at all that information about the legal effects of statehood um, be granted to voters the way that they were in Alaska, Alaska and Hawaii? And the answer is no. So they are being treated differently even compared to other recent admission communities that were recently admitted as states, uh, most recently admitted as states into the country. Puerto Ricans deserve to have the full facts and information about what not only the statehood bill contains, but also 
what that transition would mean because we cannot make these decisions with a lack of information and find out afterwards that there are tax impl implications, financial implications, and status implications that may negatively affect their lives. And so our bill, HR 2070, it contains and guarantees and mandates a full information campaign so that Puerto Ricans know what they're voting for. It doesn't say no to statehood. It doesn't mandate independence. What it mandates is a fully informed and just process that Puerto Ricans deserve. So with that, I thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Cox Al uh, Alomar for your, um, for your expertise and I yield back to the chair.